jacuzzi soaking bucket change water day. I just still have to harvest a little bit more. Now it needs another, I think, maybe 30, 40 liters to bring it up to level. Then tomorrow I will do all the additives, adding and the pH and TDS. I will take it to about 400. Sometimes I go a little bit over and it gets to five, but I'm not bothered because the vandas that go in here, they are quite big. I used to be able to soak two vandas in here at one time. They have grown to such a degree, it's now one at a time. So let's go have a look at them. Before we get to the really big ones that soak in that uh, tub I just showed you, I wanted to show you my two Denisonianas here. I pulled them down from where they hang because of the backlight, even though it is a cloudy day. I think it's better we can have a better look at them here because as you can see, my setup is in these white, they hold clothes pegs, etc. baskets. Once a year, I go around and take all the algae on the bottom there off as best as I can. I have a companion plant in here that is okay to stay because I can't get it out because you can see the amount of roots I have. So I keep pulling the fronds out. I mean, in, in summer, in a way, it helps me because there's a lot of humidity in there because of that uh, additional fern. I have lava rock on the bottom because I don't want these to be swinging around willy-nilly when it's getting very windy, so that weighs the basket down. But it has never bloomed for me. Can't exactly say it's not blooming size, but uh, not a single bloom. Roots for days. And now they're branching out as well. It's incredible. Let me see if I can turn it around without dropping it. Let's get around the back. Look at that. I mean, it's not like for lack of roots or lack of vigor, but no blooms in the two and a half years that I've had that I have it. It gets full light, full sun, direct sun every morning until about 12, one o'clock. And then late afternoon when the sun sets, another two hours of direct sun. So there's that one. And then here's another Denisoniana. This should be the yellow version. Also, beautiful plant. It's growing really well. We had initially little issues with roots. Start, stop, start, stop, start, stop. And also here it was happening. And then I put it into the Vanda tub as well. These two go in the first thing in the morning. They just go in and I let them soak. But again, you see, it's uh, a reoccurring problem with the algae. I hate that stuff. I can't get it off. I, I guess it's only for aesthetic purpose. It's not something that will hurt the, the, the roots. They still absorb. Even this one is now getting lots and lots of hydration. So all the roots are growing really, really well. But no blooms none whatsoever which is a shame well, well we'll keep at it we'll see what they do here is hogoglossum kimberlianum again you can see that it has some hail damage i didn't mention that in my last video but uh, warm rain i thought was perfect I did not anticipate hail and it's done some damage. So I just wanted to point that out in case people see it in the other video and think it's scale. No, this is hail damage. I'll show you the other one. You see my Papilio Nanthe Chao Praia? No, Panducula. Sorry, this one is the Panducula. Look at it. Oh, that was growing so well. Same thing. Hail damage. <sighs> Can't win, can you? 
I'm so happy to hear that pouring, pouring rain. And this was maybe two months ago, so this is not the recent shower that we've had. And then I saw all these nicks, and it was from the hail. And here on this cork, I have a little, I have a papillonante chao praia, which is in the back. I'll show you just now, but you can see. Look at what's growing on this thing. I just let it over the winter because I wanted to see what it does. In the summer, it might help me with added humidity around the base of this plant because our summers are super dry. So this one has finally gotten roots long enough. And these roots are now in permanent water culture. <laughs> There's no other way I can hydrate this one enough with just a sprayer because the roots, they dry out really quickly. And it was growing really nice roots, new roots. And when the hail came, it bumped off the root tips. You see how that just stopped? This one is now starting to grow back. And in here, I had two beautiful roots starting. And the hail just, yeah, they're sensitive. And they just bumped off every time hail touched it. So they stopped growing. We'll see with this plant. That's why I haven't taken this weed off, whatever it is. I haven't taken it off because I thought, okay, more humidity. Maybe they'll reactivate. I don't know. But anyway, this one hasn't bloomed for me either. It's in full sun all the time. So this stand gets moved around based on the sunlight and it's in full sun all the time. And behind it is the papillonanthe little thing. Here you can see the plant itself. This is the chao praia. Not doing well. This is not the climate for it. I do not have the humidity for it. So I may have to consider it being passed on to someone else who can accommodate its humidity. So on the right here, you can see Vanda Dragon Lip, Dragon Fire Lip. It's the same one as the Orchid Room has, even though hers is called Big Bloody Lip. They are the same. Uh, this was not something that the nursery, I guess, had any control over. They got them as seedlings. So I got mine as a seedling then, and now it's been blooming. And uh, I pollinated it last year with my Denisoniana dark chocolate. Did a cross-pollination there, so there's a seed pod maturing. I had four spikes in here developing, but they've dried up. Let me see if I can get to it without getting caught in there. You see, they just went black. I had four spikes. There's one green one still nubbing down there. I don't know if it's gonna make it. Here's another one, still green. So there's hope. It's a vigorous bloomer, so I'm not really, yeah, it would have been nice to get four spikes, but you know what? I would rather it stand in the pouring rain, the chance that it gets. And here I have near Phoenicia Ovanda Rainbow Forest, probably a made up name, beautiful, beautiful little apricot blooms. So this is the Vanda hanger. Suddenly I'm not with the top, top, uh, I was gonna say top guns, but with the big Vandas. I oh, might as well have a look at all the other ones as well. But look, these two, you can see the, Denisonia dark chocolate here and that has the seed pod back there maturing from the dragon fire lip that I just showed you so this one was featured also in the GVOS with its blooms this bloom spike recently opened you can see how the colors are changing from a beautiful red burgundy to a bronze as it ages and it's pushed out a second spike when I got this plant, you can see how high it was down by the sunburn mark, because that is my sunburn. I got the plant when that was the crown, and I had two little stumps of roots. So, yeah. This is what it's done in two years. It has become quite the root monster, I'm telling you. So this now has to be watered on its own because it has grown 
write something in two years. Yeah, it used to sit in the tub together with lavender mist. Also pushing out a spike. I normally get two spikes. Oh well, maybe because it was in the last stages of winter this one started, I don't know. But it's a stonker of a spike. I haven't seen it that fat and like that before. And so these two used to enjoy the tub together, chill out and soak up their nutrients. But look at it now. <laughs> so these guys now have to soak separately. There is no room for them to be together. And in the middle here, just hanging out because it, I was hoping for rain last night, is the Rhynchostylus crossed with Cerulea. The weirdest banda I would say I've had simply because it's, well, it grows weird. It's, it's very slow. And look at the roots. It soaks in its very own bucket and I can leave it there for hours. If I don't leave it there for hours every day, I would have these roots fail constantly like you see down here and down here. It's just, I don't know, almost a full water culture vanda. And it's very reluctant to put out roots in the butt base as well. So I have it on a fungicide regime because I'm not entirely sure what is wrong with this, if there's something wrong with this, or if it's just the character of the vanda. The leaves die back from the tip, not the base, so that's good. And again, now that we're getting photobombed by a root, look at the amount of algae I have here. Sometimes I take a toothbrush and while it's soaking in the last, before I change the tub, that dirty water, I take a toothbrush and try to brush it off, but there's no hope. This morning I took the hose and really, really drenched it, but I think I'm doing more damage than good by trying to get rid of this algae. And I don't want to risk it. I mean, if I'm going to cut roots, it's because I'm going to cut them so I can accommodate the plant, but we'll have to see what that is about. It bothers me, but maybe it's just pure aesthetics. Because it's happening to my Pectalmintho scoldatus as well. Look at this algae. Ick. It soaks in its own little tub. It doesn't share water with any of them. And look at it. It's just aesthetics, but it bugs me. And I'm having some problems with mine. I don't know why. So what you're seeing here is fungicide residue spray on the leaves because it's coming up with these marks. It started it last year. So I cut off, you know, at the base, I cut them off because I thought it would be spreading. And then it stopped for a while and now it's starting again. And I don't like it. And I don't like seeing it on the new leaves. Mm. I don't know what that is. But anyway, so there's that. And down here I have two loose nearies. And uh, this one is going to have to go into the shade setting soon on my prime location there of my real estate where there's bright shade, no direct sun. The angle of the sun is now hitting it in the afternoon too much. So we will be moving that shortly. And here's the blue one. So loose Neary, normal. And then this is blue loose Neary who is not really bloomed well for me although it's growing well but uh, yeah I think what I'm going to do actually is cut this main growth off the rest of the fans and see if I can't put it into a pot with Lekka in a self-watering setup because for two years in a row I have had spikes grow then they would fail and only got two blooms so I am wondering what's going on with that, so it might be interesting to see what's happening in the rhizome. Not quite ready to take that step though, just hesitating. 
I don't see any new root tips growing at this point, but maybe that's the problem. I mean, I spray it every morning and it gets really, really well hydrated until the roots turn green. And I do that again at around, what, three o'clock in the afternoon. But yeah, something has to happen there. Maybe we can get some better blooms because it is beautiful. It's growing vigorously. So, now that the sun has come out, the whole angle situation of my lander stand has changed. And I want to make sure that I sign off appropriately without the sun blaring in our faces. And thank you very much for watching and hanging out with me today with my hanging vanda stand. Take care, everybody. Please stay safe. Bye. Thank you.